The reality is that not everybody has a network that reaches everywhere. And so you always have to work with other carriers using what we call type two circuits, meaning it's over someone else's network to get to the end user that you need to. And, and as Doug points out, big national buyers will work with one carrier partner who will then work with whoever has the local infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, now, <clears throat> there has, um, there's been a couple of categories, you know, regulated access, unbundled network elements, you know, that's copper and uh, inter-office transport regulated under the 96 Telecom Act. And then there's just commercial wholesale. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the regulated access is, is by and large ending. Um, and, uh, and the wholesale, you know, as Doug points out, it's expensive. And uh, so as we think about what's happening with this open access project, um, they've called it an open access project, but they've also been clear that AT&T itself and their retail operations will be the anchor tenant and they'll take some time to prove the market commercially. Who knows what they'll then open it up to? It could be, you know, B2B, other carriers selling to businesses. It could be they open it to municipalities for smart applications. Are they going to open it to T-Mobile who wants to sell mobile and home internet in a bundle like AT&T does? Maybe not. And here's another better question. Are they going to open it up to Dane at a reasonable rate? Because they're going to give Verizon a really big discount because they're going to be buying 10,000 of these connections. And if Dane wants to buy three, I bet he pays twice as much.